Damn, this Tommy has got some nasty bugs that he just sort of barfs out, man. Ugh. And then, of course, you got Zongi there for comic relief. But uh, all in all, pretty good stuff. Toriko Gourmet number 73, the sooner the butter. What, what, what? Wait, did you say butter? Well, hello, my brothers and sisters and gourmet hunters of the nerd nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and tantalizing, freezing, insect-ridden, sometimes pretty frickin' gross tale of Toriko. Our last chapter saw us with uh, really kind of just everybody moving along on their paths and just kind of checking in with the various groups. You know, we had uh, Zangi and, and his uh, and his ragtag group for, there for the comic relief. Uh, you know, we saw uh, Toriko and, and company wind up going and, uh, and actually we got to see Takamaru and Match in action. And I got to see them kind of moving closer towards uh, the Mountain of Ice Hell. And, and really what we wound up seeing is, uh, is Tommy Rod at the end of it having some kind of insect coming out of his mouth and talking about launching some preemptive attack. Uh, against this, uh, this this unknown person that's footprints were still in the snow. So that's how things left off. And really that's where things pick up. We, we do you know kind of go and jump amongst the uh, the few groups a, as usual. But, uh, but really, you know, first and foremost, we wind up going and seeing uh, a bit of, a bit of uh, comic relief uh, from Zongi's group. Uh, we do see, we check in briefly with Toriko and such. They wind up finally getting to the Mountain of Ice Hell. We see that, and then we see this great double-page spread, which is kind of nice because it has the Gourmet Corp folks against Toriko uh, on one side of the double-page spread, and on the other side, we've got Toriko and Takamaru and Match, you know, so very cool. And then in the background, Zongi's, like, climbing up or whatever, looking like the ass that he is, so... <laughs> Old Zongi. <laughs> but uh, so so they're there. Kamatsu is just happy that he made it. Uh, you know, it, it, Match and, and company, they kind of want to just take a rest. And Toriko's like, no, hell no. We got to keep going. Century Soup is awaiting, you know. So they get moving along, and that's kind of their 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 portion of this so far. And then we get the comic relief with Zongi. Zongi, if you remember, uh, and, and his group wound up coming across some Grawluses in the last uh, in the last thing. And he's always referring to everything as if it's a game, as if life's a game. And, that, and it, to me, that takes me a little bit out of the immersion that you would normally have. But it is funny for the comic relief. Um, but he keeps talking about RPGs and how you got to save, and this is how you find this, and this is the path you take, and this is the dungeon. Nonetheless, though, they wind up coming across uh, some crazed-looking huge wolves, jaguars, some sort of huge beast animal after they've gotten away from the Grawlruses. And, uh, and he's like, oh, no, we got to get away, you know? And uh, he's like, forget this, I'm getting out of here. It's not even worth it. That's all. I've had it, you know? And they wind up going and actually sliding down the side of, uh, you know, of, of the cliff that they were walking along. And, uh, and it's funny, too, because one of his guys says, just for the record, this is not the easiest route. Anyway, they slide down this cliff, and he's talking about how, oh, I just got to save, go back to the last save, you know, because we're going to die. <laughs> and uh, they wind up sliding down, and they actually come upon, uh, they, they land on this kind of like little shelf, this little outcropping, and see a cave that goes that goes into uh, in, into the side of, uh, I don't know if it's the side of the actual mountain, if it links up with that eventually, but the side of the cliff that they fell down. And they're not dead, of course, you know, so, uh, so they're still going to be around for another chapter or so for comic relief. So nonetheless, though, then we go and we actually get, oh, I shudder when I think about this, we get, uh, we actually get to go back and see, you know, the Gourmet Corp fellas, uh, you know, Barry and, and Bogey and, and Tommy Rod. And we see Tommy uh, has, not, has barfed out four insects, right? And these things, they're imposing. I mean, it's cool. There's a double page spread, and they, and they show each one of them, and they're all capture level of like 35 to 40 in that neighborhood. So these things are hardcore. But he barfs these freaking things up, man, which is really gross, and then goes and sends them along on their way. And, uh, and Bogey and stuff, they're like, you know, boss, you got to tell us when you're going to do that from now on. And he's like, what are you talking about? They're harmless and this and that. My insects only go in through the anus, right, which is gross enough, lay their eggs in the stomach, and then <laughs> it's like they're harmless enough, right? And they're like, yeah, they're anything but harmless, dude. And then we go and we see that Tommy hasn't used his full bag of tricks because then he goes and he's like, no, the real one's in here. And he opens up his mouth and you just see this sort of like face of some weird freaking thing, you know? Uh, so some other type of thing that he's ingested and, uh, it really just kind of gross, but I guess at the same time, whatever, he's this insect like creature. So, Ooh. but, so he sends them off, uh, to go and, and obviously catch up with, uh, with their prey with, uh, you know, to whoever they're following with those tracks. Right. And like I said, I, I thought that, that was a guy that had the, uh, kind of looked like a ninja, you know, had it like snake eyes, you know, has this like suit helmet thing with the hair hanging out the back of it and everything else. Um, Nonetheless, though, we do. We wind up seeing, uh, we go back and we kind of see, uh, you know, Toriko and, and Komatsu and company. 
and uh, and, and really they're just uh, you know it, it's much nicer inside the mountain. And, uh, and of course, they're, they're on their way to get Century Soup and everything. And Toriko goes and takes a minute to explain to Kamatsu a little bit about the headwinds and everything else. And now, um, you know, because of, of, of what's going on with, uh, you know, with the methane, you know, stuff and, and all that melt, it's, it's making the winds even worse than normal, you know. So Kamatsu basically says, okay, so this is the worst possible time that we could be coming here. And Toriko says, well, yeah, but, you know, the Century Soup is here. It's on the line. And that's, that's worth it, you know. So... That's kind of the exchange that we get from them, and uh, and again, we wind up just kind of, you know, I wouldn't say so much being even introduced some more, because we know that Match and Takamaru are now kind of, you know, that, that they've all joined up, and that uh, at least for now, their paths align, so they're kind of, you know, allies temporarily, uh, maybe permanently, I don't know. Uh, but he kind of keeps making cracks, too, uh, Tor Toriko does about Match and the Mafia and stuff like that, because, you know, he's like a Mafia guy, <laughs> so, which I think is kind of funny. So then we go and we wind up seeing, um, <laughs> it was kind of cool because we wind up seeing Tommy Rod and company uh, get going and, and come upon his bugs and they're frozen over, right? And they're like, oh, boss, your bugs got frozen. He's like, no, they're not frozen. They weren't killed. They're paralyzed, right? And then they're like, oh, man, you know, who could, and, 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 and Tommy's thinking, you know, I wonder who could have done that because these, these type of rare level bugs with these high capture levels are like next to impossible or whatever. So as soon as he said that, right, immediately in my head, I thought of the Pompadour, and I thought of Knocking Master Jiro, right? So, uh, sure as shit, you turn the page, and then they go and they show uh, this figure walking through, you know, walking through, and as he gets to, to uh, the, the Mountain of Ice Hell and whatnot, goes and pulls off the, the mask, and it turns out that that hair that was hanging out the back of it is actually just part of the mask, pulls it off, and you see from the back the Pompadour over there, right? And you see... <laughs> knocking Master Jiro is here for some sensuous soup, you know? So the shit is going to get thick because we got Jiro, we've got Toriko, we've got Takamaro, we've got Match, we've got three heavy hitters, it looks like, from Gourmet Corp. Man, really, really cool stuff over here. Um, and that's pretty much how the, I mean, how, how the chapter ends off. I mean, we wind up having... There's really not a whole lot else to be... Uh, to be spoken of because that's where it ends as far as uh, you know as far as Jiro and him just kind of walking up and you just kind of get that cool stoic look from him, you know and uh, it just has this nice look man I just it's a real cool presence I guess he has I shouldn't say stoic just a presence you know um, but I do like how when it goes back to the thing with Tommy because even Tommy's like what my insects have been paralyzed who could have done this the only person capable of knocking insects out as rare as these is and then they wind up getting hit with some kind of blizzard thing or whatever and Barry's gonna go take care of it but uh, like I said, though, nonetheless, very cool to know that Knocking Master Jiro is here in Ice Hell with us and, uh, and, is, and is going to be, uh, we presume, uh, hopefully wind up meeting up with Toriko and company and actually helping them out. So that's uh, that's kind of my, my hope and my thought, my prediction. So my chapter question, though, for you, brothers and sisters, is, and, you know, and, and real quick before I get to that, I forgot to mention, too, that uh, what I had mentioned in last chapter about that Tundra Dragon and thinking that maybe Tommy had killed it prior um, Toriko confirmed that when he was talking to Kamatsu, because Kamatsu's like, man, you know, it's so cold, I can't believe that that Tundra Dragon, you know, wound up freezing, and he's like, no, I think it was killed first, and then it froze over, you know, so we can, we can assume that it was either killed by Tommy, I'm assuming because Tommy came out of it, that he somehow, who knows, maybe he went up into its anus, and <laughs> it took it out from the inside, I don't know, <laughs> so, uh, my, I don't know, so my chapter question, though, for you, brothers and sisters, is really, I guess, what are your thoughts on, on knocking Master Jiro uh, and him, of course, turning up here in Ice Hell? Uh, certainly, to me, it seems like the, the shit is getting thick and it's going to be real good. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button, if you should think that I deserve it, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, Nation. My man Gut says to come over and check out my other channel as well as follow me on the Twitter and the Facebook and the Instagram.